This is lesson 6.3a is an alpha in college algebra, the hyperbola, page number 545 in your college algebra book. All right, so when you're given an equation of a hyperbola, which we'll get to in a minute, um, one, a couple of the things that you want to do is you want to com use uh, completing the square, and then you're interested in finding the center, the vertices, and the foci in order to go ahead and graph the hyperbola. So if you look at the little bluish gray box, bottom of page 545, it gives you a definition of a hyperbola. And to the left of that is a drawing of a hyperbola. So if we have um, a drawing of a hyperbola, and it looks something like this. We'll put it through the x-axis for this first one. Okay. A um, couple things to note. If we were to take the distance from the foci here, and we were to draw a line from one foci to a point on the hyperbola to the other foci, like that, the difference between those, let's call this D1 and this D2, the difference between those, D1 minus D2, Two, and if we were to take the absolute value of those, that would give you um, just a number, let's say 5. Okay, so let's say that gives you 5. That means that if we draw, drew a uh, line from anywhere on from the focus to a point on that, or if I drew it from there to there, or there there. If we were to take the difference between all of those um, pieces here, like this line minus this one, this line minus this one, we'd get five for every one of them. Okay, that would be constant. All right, so let's look at some uh, things about the uh, hyperbola. Let me draw them back on here. Um, we said the foci were here and here. These are the vertexes, or the vertices. The segment from the vertex to vertex. So from this vertex to this vertex. Those are called the uh, transverse axes. So if I were to um, spell that out for you, it would be transverse axes, A-X-I-S. And again, these points are the vertices, that one right there and that one right there. And let's see, what else do we know about these? Um, if we have a segment, um, which I'm not, and I'll show you how to get the segment later, a segment there, and, or a point there and a point there, this distance right there between um, my two B's. Um, those are going to be called, and let's see if I can write this out, those are called um, conjugate axes. So that's the shorter line there. We also have an asymptote. We're going to have a line that goes here in a line that goes here, and if you remember about asymptotes, asymptotes are where they don't cross, or the, I'm sorry, the graph does, this graph right here does not cross the asymptote, neither does this one here. So what we're going to learn to do is we're going to learn to figure out where the vertices are, where the uh, conjugate axes are, and that makes it real quick and easy in order to draw the, uh, the hyperbola. So let's get started with that. So we're going to start with the standard equation of a hyperbola with the center at the origin, meaning that when we have our graph, well, let's, uh, let's bring our graph back down here. When we have our graph, when we were to, if we were to draw the hyperbola and the center is at the uh, origin, that means the distance between my vertex here and my vertex here is going to be like this. And when my center point 
right there is at the origin. The uh, distance that is half the total length here between my vertices, that, di that right there is going to be my origin. So we're looking at hyperbolas with my center at that origin. So the equation that makes that happen is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. Now notice it's very similar to the uh, equation for an ellipse. The difference is the sign right here. It's a minus sign instead of a plus sign. And we'll have some other differences here in a minute, but for right now that's what we've got. And that is for um, a uh, hyperbola that goes this way. Okay? If I had a, a hyperbola that goes this way, my equation is going to be a little different here. My equation for that one is going to be y squared over a squared minus b squared, oops, I'm sorry, minus x squared over b squared equals 1. So notice what happened here. In uh, the ellipse, we changed the a's around, the a and the b around, to determine whether um, the parabola, or whether the uh, ellipse went this way, or whether it went this way. But dealing with or hyperbolas, um, things are a little bit different. We left the x, or we left the a's and the b's in their current position, but we changed the x's and the y's. So this one right here is when our, our hyperbola looks like that. This one on the top, right here, is when the hyperbola goes like that, side to side. Okay. So let's look at look at what else we have. The vertex, or the vertices, because we have two of them here, is going to be at the points, two points, negative a zero, and a zero for that equation there. Let's get that equation out of the way for right now. The uh, foci is going to be at negative c zero and at c zero. Okay, and if you remember, let's uh, get our graph back up here and look at it real quick. So if I have my hyperbola that goes this way and this way, my distance c um, is going to be how far I am from the origin to the foci. That's c. And then this one over here is negative c. Okay? So that's where they got the foci uh, where they did at negative c0 and at c0. And we also have c squared equals, now notice we have a little bit of a change here. In the other one, we had a subtraction sign. This time it's a plus sign. c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which is your um, <coughs> Pythagorean theorem. So that's what we've got. Now let's, uh, let's continue on with some more stuff here. Okay, so let's look at this uh, particular hyperbola here. And notice what's happening here. And one of the ways we describe whether the parabola is that way or up and down like that is to look at the transverse axis. Remember the transverse axis is the line that connects the vertices together. When the transverse axis is horizontal um, we begin to graph first of all the uh, asymptotes. Now there are two asymptotes with these and the first one has a formula y equals negative b over a x and the other one is b over a x. Okay so everything's dealing with a b's and c's here. So negative b over a x and b over a x are going to be your um, two asymptotes that we're going to be using. 
So what happens is, because that's a B over AX and a negative B over AX, you're going to get a, an asymptote that, uh, and we'll do it with a, a red line here, you're going to get an asymptote that looks like this, and then another one that looks like this. And then your hyperbola will be in between those. Never cross them. Okay? So let's continue going here and we'll find out some interesting stuff about these. So in example one, it says find the equation of the hyperbola that has vertices at 0, negative 4, and it'll have another vertice at 0, 4, and that's pretty common. You should be able to just see, oh, 0, negative 4, the other one's going to be at 0, 4. The foci are at 0, negative 6, as well as at 0, positive 6. So one of the things that you can discover when you, when you see this um, is the vertice, because the vertice ends in 4 instead of begins in 4, so because the y values are 4 here and the x values are 0, I know that my vertex is going to be up and down. So if I have my graph there, I'm going to go down 4 and up 4, and there is my transversal axis, which means that my um, handy-dandy hyperbola is going to look like this and look like this. Okay, So I can get an idea of what my um, hyperbola is going to look like right away just by just having them give you the vertex and your focus. Now remember, notice the focus is zero, the vertex is going to be zero. That will always be the case. Whichever place value um, your vertex is, if that's zeros, then your focus is going to be both zeros in your exposition. If those are threes, your focus is going to have threes and vice versa. If this is zero, then your focus is going to have zeros for your y's or whatever number that you've got there. So that's pretty good to remember. All right, so what they want us to do is they want us to find an equation. So they're asking us to take this information here and make it look like this right here. Okay? Or like the other one where we had y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared. Okay, depending on whether it's uh, a hyperbola that goes like this or a hyperbola that goes like that. And we already know the hyperbola is going to go like this, right? Okay, so because of that, we're going to use the other formula. And if you remember, the other formula is y squared over a squared minus b squared over, I'm sorry, minus x squared over b squared equals 1. So we're going to use that formula for this particular one. So let's use this in order to solve that, given the information that we have right there. So real quick and easy, we know what our A is, and we know what our B is. So we're just going to rewrite this as y squared and a plus, or I'm sorry, a minus x squared over equals 1. Now we need to find out um, what our a and our b are. All right, so we know that our a is 4, and we know that our c is 6. So we know our a is 4 because in the vertex it has the A there, and we know that our, our uh, C, because that's what we have on the focus, so we look for the number here, and it's 6. Problem is, we need to have a B right here. So we use this formula, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. We end up putting a 6 here, and that will equal 16 plus B squared. You solve for the variable, and you end up getting b squared equals 20. Now don't go ahead and solve b squared equals 20. b equals the square root of 20 because we're not interested in b. 
we're interested in b squared right here. That's not a minus 2, that's a squared here. We're interested in b squared, so we don't have to find what b is. So that tells me that my b is 20, and our b squared is 20. It also tells me that my a is 4, but what does that say? It says square the a. So I'm going to square my 4 and get 16. And that will end up being the equation of this particular hyperbola. So in 6.3, B is in Bravo. And in the next video, we'll start example 2.